In this video, we're going to look at limits as they approach infinity. So let's talk about this graph before we go into the definition. So here on the right, I have a function drawn in green. And as we can see from this function, as we move from left to right, uh, it gets closer and closer to y equals zero. So it starts out at uh, y equals four. We move over a couple points on the x-axis. We get to negative two, then to one, then to negative 0.5, then to positive 0.25. And as you can imagine, uh, every two values of x, we're going to get uh, closer and closer to zero, swapping between the positive values and the negative values. So we can assume that as this curve goes closer and closer and closer to infinity, in other words, as it grows, as x grows bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually we're going to just be hovering very slightly above and very slightly below zero. Okay, so this would be us saying that if we have an interval from a to infinity, so here we could say, let's pick this first point as a, uh, then when we say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l, what we're really saying is that our function f of x tends towards l as x tends towards infinity. So as x gets bigger, our curve uh, tends towards some specific value. It doesn't make sense to say that the limit at infinity equals something uh, because, of course, infinity is not a number. It is a value that x can trend towards as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but we do use a very similar notation. So when we say the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals to l, we should be thinking more so of an arrow as it tends towards l. So in this case, as x gets closer and closer to infinity, uh, for our curve, our green curve, we would say that f of x then tends towards zero. So we would say in this case that the limit as x approaches infinity of our curve of f of x is equal to zero. That's what we would write, but we would say it tends to zero. Okay. And of course, this isn't just in the positive direction. We could do the negative direction as well. So how would that look? Well, if we think about uh, negative infinity instead, we would simply change the definition. So I would just write the alternative here, uh, but everything else looks exactly the same. So we would have from negative infinity to A, and then we'd have X approaching negative infinity. And that would just reverse the direction of this curve. Okay. So. What does this tell us? Well, this gives us information about horizontal asymptotes. So remember, a horizontal asymptote is a point that as you go uh, further and further into the graph, either infinity or negative infinity, it never quite touches the point, or never quite converges to the point, um, but it goes very close to it. So here is the arctangent function, and uh, the arctangent function has uh, horizontal asymptotes at pi over two and negative pi over two. So the function never quite hits those points, but it gets very close. And we can say that it's a horizontal asymptote if we have either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x tends to l, or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x tends to l. So in other words, if we take a look at the negative infinity here, and going left on the x-axis, it tends towards negative pi over two. And if we consider uh, x going to infinity, so the positive x-axis, then it tends towards pi over two. Okay, so these would be our horizontal asymptotes for the arctangent function. So let's ask ourselves some questions before we start doing problems. And I'm gonna do a couple of problems in this video and there's going to be a follow-up video with a few more algebraic examples. This is more about concepts and showing the basics. So if we have a curve, f of x equals one over x to the n. What happens as n grows larger? And what happens as x tends towards infinity? Well, let's ask ourselves. So, in fact, let's just take a look at the positive direction for now. So, if I have, say, one over x, what does the curve one over x looks like? It looks something like this. It would be one over x. Uh, what happens if we have uh, one over x squared? So if I put in, say, values uh, for one, 
I would get 1 over 1. If I put in values for 2, I'd get 1 over 4. If I put x equals 3, I'd get 1 over 9. So actually what happens is that this gets uh, smaller even faster. But if we take a look at these graphs, what we find is that this function 1 over x to the n is always going to tend towards 0 as x tends towards infinity. So we could say f of x tends towards 0 as x tends towards infinity. And even if this is, say, 1 over x to the point 1, so we could do this. We could do 1 over x to the point 1. So it's still getting smaller, but of course it's getting smaller at a much slower rate. But it's still going to tend towards 0 as x grows infinitely large. Okay, and if we go in the negative direction, let's just add negativity there. Okay, if we do the regular curve, we would end up with something like that. If we do the 1 over x squared, we would get the same thing, but it gets smaller a little bit faster. If we say take x to the point 1, roughly the same thing, but it gets smaller a little bit slower. But still, we're tending towards 0 whether we go to infinity or negative infinity. So what we can say is that if we have some value, this should be n. If n is greater than zero, then the limit as x goes to either positive or negative infinity of one over x to the n is going to be zero. So as x and n get larger, then we get closer and closer to zero. So zero is a horizontal asymptote for any function of the form one over x to the n with n greater or equal to zero. Okay, and this is a really good idea to have memorized. And another way that you can think of this, which is better for understanding, is that one is a constant, right? So one is never going to change, but x to the n is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So as this ratio gets bigger, this is like saying, okay, one over two, one over three, 1 over 5, 1 over 7. The bottom gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So as you can imagine, as we keep going, eventually we're going to have something like 1 over 21,965. And this is very, very close to zero. So as we keep going, the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, which means that this ratio of 1 over the huge denominator is basically so small it might as well be zero. Okay, let's see this in action. So here I want to find the limit as x approaches infinity of x over 2 over, or x minus 2, over x squared plus 1. Okay. Well, intuitively, before we do any algebra on this, what I want to say is that x grows smaller, sorry, x grows slower than x squared. Okay, so if we think about the ratio, and we just think about x over x squared, and we don't do any simplification here, uh, we would have something like, say, as x equals 2, we'd have 2 over 4. If x equals 3, we have 3 over 9. If x equals 4, we have 4 over 16. And as you can see, the ratio gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is going to tend towards 0, because the denominator is growing at a much faster speed than the numerator. So eventually, at some point, as we go infinitely bigger and bigger, it might as well be zero. Okay, so intuitively we know this is going to be zero just looking at the powers and the growth of each function. But algebraically, how would we do this? Well, one thing that we can do, which is usually the method that I would take on any problem approaching infinity, is to divide every single term by the highest power of x. So this would be the same thing as the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus 2 over x squared plus 1, where each term is divided by x squared. And it's divided by x squared because x squared is the highest power. So we would do x over x squared minus 2 over x squared over x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. And now I'm going to simplify this. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity of, well, x over x squared is going to become 1 over x. Uh, then 2 over x squared we cannot simplify. 
Okay, uh, x squared over x squared is going to be 1, and then 1 over x squared also cannot be simplified. Okay, so remember using our limit laws, we can distribute all of this. So this is going to take a little bit of time to write, but just to show this in one full example here, this would be the same thing as saying the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x minus the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over x squared. This will be divided by the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared. Okay, now here's where things get nice, right? Because we know how this works. We know that for the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x, x is growing really large really quickly. So this is going to tend to 0. And this is based on the formula that we had in the previous slide. Same for the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 over x squared. Well, x squared is going to get really large really quick. So this is going to tend to 0. So uh, if I make a little thing down here that tells us our progress so far, what we have right now is we have 0 minus 0 on top. When we take a look at the bottom, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1, this is a constant. So uh, this is going to be 1 at the bottom because there's no x variable to change. Uh, but then the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x squared, uh, much like on the top with 2 over x squared, this is also going to tend to 0 because x squared, the, the denominator, is growing much faster than the numerator. So we're going to have 0 minus 0 over 1 plus 0 is the same thing as 0 over 1, which is just equal to 0. So algebraically now, we've shown that the limit as x approaches infinity of x minus 2 over x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. First we did that uh, with our intuition, and then we did this algebraically. Now our intuition is interesting, right? Because we have x over x squared. If we just take a look at the highest power in the numerator and the denominator, x over x squared, we could have just simplified this. <laughs> we could have just said this is the same thing as 1 over x. And then that would have told us that it tends to 0, because x grows larger than the numerator. But really, when we do these problems with simple polynomials, all we have to do is compare the highest powers. If the, if the denominator is going to grow faster than the numerator, it's going to tend to 0. If the numerator grows faster than the denominator, we're going to tend to some infinity. If the numerator and the denominator grow at the same rate, then we'll get some numerical value. So here's a case where our numerator and denominator grow at the same rate. We have 6x squared minus 2x over 3x squared plus 1. So if I just think about the highest power in each section, really what I have is 6x squared over 3x squared. And we can do some simplification and see that this is 2. So our intuition and our guess so far taking a look at the rate of growth of each of our functions, suggests that this is going to tend towards 2 as x goes to infinity. So let's show algebraically that this is the case. And we're going to use the same tactic as before. So we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by the highest power of both the numerator and the denominator. So we're going to divide every term by x squared. So this will be 6x squared over x squared minus 2 over x squared all over 3x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. And now we can do some simplification. This is the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity of 6 minus 2 over x squared all over 3 plus 1 over x squared now, I could rewrite everything and distribute the limit as x approaches infinity on each of these terms, uh, but for the sake of brevity, let's just take a look at this. Well, 6 isn't going to change because it's a constant, but 2 over x squared, this is going to tend to 0 because the denominator is growing much faster than the numerator. Uh, on the bottom, well, 3 is going to stay the same, but 1 over x squared is going to tend to 0 because, again, the denominator is growing much faster than the numerator. x squared grows, 1 does not. So what we end up with is now uh, 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. So as x approaches infinity, our curve 6x squared minus 2 over 3x squared plus 1 is going to tend towards 2. And 
to link it back to the horizontal asymptote, that will also mean that two here is going to be a horizontal asymptote. So whatever the graph looks like, if we plot our points one and two, we are going to find that we get a horizontal asymptote at two. So we'll do some more examples in the next video, but for now, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments below, and hopefully me or someone else will be able to get to you and answer those questions.